I'm Teresa, part of the iMoot team, uh, you probably know. So um, I'd just like to introduce Richard Jones. Um, thanks, Richard, for, for taking the time out of your um, schedules and, and the weekend to uh, present. I know this is the second pre presentation for this one, Effective Forums. And for um, anyone that was in um, Diane Forbes' um, session, she had some um, good ideas for invigorating online um, discussion. So I think together with that one and um, excuse me, and Richard's presentation now, uh, you know, we've, we've got some, we're going to have some great ideas. So without further ado, I will pass over to you, Richard. Thank you. Thanks, Teresa. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, also you might, um, I'll say this right at the front, you might have caught uh, uh, Jill Margerison's um, presentation, um, Super Session Australia, uh, and if not, I would suggest you go back and look at that because a lot of what I'm showing here grows out, you know, it comes out of the work that we did together at, um, at the Southport School, uh, Gold Coast, Queensland. So um, yeah, so I'll be showing a lot of the things that she's done and her forms are, as you will see, um, really, really uh, impressive. Right, okay, so what are we going to talk about today? Oh, sorry, <laughs> I'm changing the slide on my other screen as well so I can look at my notes. So if I keep looking over there, you know why. Okay, um, so yeah, this is what we're going to, this is what we're going to do, give you just a brief background, not too much theory, just a, just a little bit, a couple of models um, I've been looking at recently um, that I think are applicable to forums. Um, just a little theoretical background, I think that always, always helps support what you do in the classroom. Um, we'll be looking at examples of student work in forums and some feedback that they've made. Uh, so that's us. Um, yeah, and I think I probably will, yeah, I'll give you the background in a minute, but okay. Because we're going to talk about blended and we're going to talk about schools. Um, so I'll probably uh, we'll say that later. So the Southport School is on the Gold Coast. It's um, it's a K-12 uh, Anglican boys' school with a strong sporting tradition. I went over there in 2010 um, with the mission from the management over there to increase the academic profile using uh, technology. Um, and if you're interested in the full story, you can find it down here at uh, elearningindustry.com. Um, what we did over a three and a half year period at the school and how we managed to uh, we managed to make some, I would call them improvements, and I hope the school would too. Um, it was a very successful project, in fact, uh, very pleasing. So uh, I'm working with uh, schools in New Zealand, I'm doing a little bit of teaching, I'm doing a little bit on advising, um, typically using uh, or suggesting bring your own device, I mean proper bring your own device programs, that is students bring pretty much anything that, that can be made to work. Uh, and I was the director of uh, e-learning at the Southport School for three and a half years. So that's me. Okay. Uh, now, oh, I keep changing the wrong screen. Here we go. So uh, this is what uh, this is what we're going to talk about, and this is our background, uh, Jill and I. So, um, so I'm going to assert right off the bat that uh, successful forms about creating culture in the classroom. Uh, very important, I think, um, and that's also the same with uh, uh, teacher professional learning as well. I think uh, we'll talk about culture a bit more. Um, planning is important. Um, uh, obviously, you want to facilitate a forum, but you have to recognise that um, it's not a one-off job, uh, and it takes a little bit of time. We're looking at blended learning models. We're not looking really at online. Uh, fully online asynchronous, so we're looking at models that combine classroom practice and uh, online. And uh, our experience has been in schools, so um, that might flavour what you take away from the, the presentation. It may or may not all be relevant to, to your own situation. So just take that on board. Um, okay, I'm just yeah. oh, change. There we go. So blended learning culture. So I spoke about culture, and uh, oh, this is a definition that you can that you can see. Uh, and I've highlighted the word here: um, 
transparency because I thought that was really, really interesting. Uh, and obviously, uh, transparent communication goes to the culture that you've established in the classroom. So, um, as, I've, as I've said here, yeah, we, um, we often focus on the, uh, the, the what do you call the mechanical aspects, but the technical aspects perhaps. What activities are we going to do online? What tools are we going to use? Um, how are we going to deliver this stuff? And perhaps, perhaps the culture gets a little bit neglected. So I just wanted to look briefly, not too, too long, at the things that happen in classrooms. Because um, I'm, I'm just a little bit afraid um, that although every, I think everyone recognizes now what's been known probably since the 90s, that um, really we need to move away from the more didactic, the uh, teaching and tutoring. We need to move to the more social. We need to move to more student-centered. Yeah, and perhaps learning centered now is, seems to be becoming a buzzword at the moment, uh, classrooms. Um, but uh, I don't think we should lose sight of the fact that there are many different types of learning that do take place in the classroom. Um, and it's not, it's never going to, it's not, it's not now and it never will be one size fits all. So there will still be a need for um, teacher directed as well as student centered, learning centered, and autonomous learning. So all those things play a part, I think, in, in the average classroom at different times. Hopefully, there's not one single culture that is totally dominant in, in a given classroom or lecture theatre. So that's, um, that's why I brought that one up, really. Um, and I would say probably in terms of schools that we are probably trying to remove, uh, move the students here from uh, left through to the right on this diagram. So uh, we're trying to get them to be independent and self-directed learners at the end of the day so that they've gone to the next stage of education. Uh, so I think that's just, uh, just something, I just thought we might look at that and say, you know, the culture varies with space, it varies with time, and Jill talked a lot about spaces in her presentation, so that's another reason she go back and look at that. The virtual spaces, the physical spaces, the spaces in time and so on. So we need to, we need to think about that too. Uh, okay. All right. Um, another aspect of culture that I think is really important, obviously tied to teacher authority in the classroom. So um, uh, what I wanted to say here was that uh, lecture style classrooms are often easier to control uh, and ideally are kept quiet. And I think probably most of us were brought up in, oh, well, sorry, I shouldn't say that. I have no idea how old people are here. Um, probably not too many as old as me. But uh, certainly our experiences in classrooms might have been completely different to the experiences of students today or the equipment that, have, that students have today. So um, I think confident teachers can recognize that a little bit of noise in the classroom, uh, social and collabor collaborative activities do generate engagement and uh, curiosity. Um, but they do tend to be, they do tend to be noisier spaces. There tends to be a lot going on. Um, and that brings in the question, as you try and introduce tech into the classroom, uh, the teacher authority is challenged a little bit because maybe the teacher doesn't own the social tech space in the, right, in the same way that the students do. Because the students know tech quite well, and they certainly know social tech quite well, but yeah, they're going to need some guidance in using that, uh, in using that uh, tech for education, and that's where the teachers come in. Um, it, there is a general impression that teachers know more about uh, students know more about tech than teachers do. I don't think that's necessarily. Um, don't think I can come to your question in a minute, Christina. Uh, yeah, so um, I don't think it's necessarily true that students know more about tech than, than teachers do. That they have a lot of superficial knowledge, um, and if they're motivated, they can find out a, a lot of things that teachers don't necessarily know, or things that teachers don't necessarily need to know. Um, yeah, but uh, whether they can use it for their own learning effectively is another matter. Our teachers at TSS, how do they deal with the changing culture? As you might expect, Christina, some enthusiastic, some less enthusiastic, and some completely op oppositional. Um, certainly in 2010 when I went in, I got a lot of uh, remarks along the lines of, you know, when I teach a student, 
it can only happen in the classroom because I need to look in their faces and I need to see how they're reacting. How is that going to work online? You know, I don't understand how that can be made to work. So um, how did I help them? So uh, it was a gradual process. Um, we, we set up, we set up a, a dialogue, I guess you would say. I worked closely with a lot of teachers. We did things like interview the students and show movies of students um, doing things. We asked teachers to come out and share their best practice. Uh, and um, I was able to show um, via research early on as well that, look, um, particularly with English teachers, I was saying, look, um, the research is showing that when students write for peers on forums, their their writing improves. You know, whereas the teachers are saying, but we need to focus on their handwriting. You know, they need to write for long periods of time. We need to get we need to get them practiced to that. And really, your Moodle thing and your forums are going to distract them from that. So yeah, we used a number of different strategies to get them to cope with change. And um, yeah, I guess if you're interested, I'd take you back to that uh, learningindustry.com article, and that has a lot more detail than I'm going to cover in this one. But do ask some more questions if I haven't, I haven't covered everything, uh, Christina. But that's the key issue, of course, yeah, coping with change. Uh, and that's not going away anytime soon, is it? So um, this is... Um, about changing classroom culture, and we're saying here that it isn't a one-off process, which you probably would have guessed. Um, st students and the teachers will go through various stages uh, in the in the development of learning around topics and so on. Uh, we won't just jump straight into higher order thinking skills about new topics. So, although it was my challenge, if you like, to 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 bring the more higher order thinking into the classroom. Obviously, it wasn't something that we were going to do in, in one year. It was obviously, you know, we started with a three-year plan to gradually improve that. So uh, certainly as, as regards forums go, um, there is a progression. And you have to recognize this progression. And you have to start with lower order interaction. So you have to start in, in the adult. Um, I've done some fully online um, uh, instruction for uh, professional learning for teachers of computer science and um, yeah you need to do things like icebreakers and, and, get a, and draw a little personality out of the students and get them yeah sharing and comparing their experiences get them comfortable in the space so um, that applies equally well to adult education and student education it's really really important to get them comfortable in the space um, Okay, once once we move on through that phase and we get into well-facilitated forms, then yeah, then we can start to introduce uh, higher-level things. And there's a nice model that caught my eye um, not so long ago, which I thought I'd share with you. And um, here, this is uh, recently published by Wang in uh, 2014. I don't know if you're familiar with this publication, but it's a free online publication, so you might as well get hold of it. Um, and it was quite an interesting article that said, uh, look, you know, this is, these are the stages, if you like, that people go through. And this is related to online learning and interaction in general. And then I thought, well, that's a really interesting model. So how does it apply to forums? And I thought, oh, yeah, okay. It begins to make a little bit of sense to me. So uh, this is about multiple tools. This is about one tool here. So. Um, yeah, who's here and how do you? So we, we start with icebreakers and easy questions. Um, we go on through a stage of um, where we're where we're modeling. I think is is really the most important thing at this wayfinding stage. Yeah, um, learners find ways to connect with each other. Or they become aware of each other, at uh, uh, the very least, and they find themselves comfortable in the space, and they see that there is knowledge in that space. So Typically, as you as you they begin to interact, they realize that other people in the class have knowledge that they can use and access. And this works quite. And I'll show you later on. This works quite well in the in the forum. So, uh, uh, what might call the wayfinding stage there, or what Wang calls the wayfinding stage. Really important. Your your intervention is is, is timely at this point. 
um, because you've got to think about things like net, uh, netiquette. You've got to create that culture of trust and transparency in the classroom. You need to tell people what you're doing and why you're doing it so that they understand and don't fear the space. So I think that's really, really important. What you'll find is as your forum is mature with your group is that you can introduce a group work. Uh, you can even have students perhaps peer facilitate or contribute to forums or perhaps even begin to post their own threads. And, uh, and this is what Wayne calls here sense making. Yeah. So at the sense making stage there, yeah, they're beginning to think about, oh, you know, at a higher level, what am I learning and who can help me learn? So I think that's good. And then uh, finally, they, um, I would suggest, yeah, synthesis creation. So that's more about um, perhaps the teacher stepping back a little bit, giving the students time to reflect, contribute. Um, so at this stage, you can use ratings and then and the mod and the as a facilitator, perhaps you just go in to um, to summarise the learning, reflect and get the students reflecting and thinking about it. And then, of course, I mean there are many tools that you can use besides forums once once you get to that stage. So. Christina will love me to say that I think at that stage Mahara is really, really good because it gives you um, gives you a nice tool uh, for the students to reflect and summarize what they may have learnt in the forums, for them to share with other people, for them to decide what they need to keep private and what they want to share publicly and so on. So I, um, you will have seen, if you saw Jill's talk, you will have seen that by the time she gets to this stage with a group of learners, then she's using Mahara quite, uh, quite a lot. Not just the Moodle forums, but she's creating, she's having them create both a group space and an individual space in Mahara that, that, that allows them to, to reflect on their learning. And I found that to be powerful too. I found that students who have used Mahara also will look back and reflect on what they did at the beginning of the term, and they will note their own progress, which is a very, very encouraging feature of the tool, I think. Uh, and I've got some evidence to, to back that up, but I'm not going to show it in this particular presentation. All right, so that's the that's that's the kind of theor theoretical background. That's the kind of model we're looking at. Um, let's have a look at some examples of student work. Um, and you can see here. So here, here's a fairly um, a fairly simple use of a forum, uh, which uh, we might call a round robin forum here. So, um, just a simple question, not too difficult. Which capture in Henry V do you identify with most and why? You might be able to read that, you might not. Where you are, I hope you can. Uh, and then there's a post there that is uh, from, again, from the teacher. And then each student is asked to pose a question onto uh, onto the next student yeah so you start to see some interaction here so uh, <laughs> the students pose the view that Barack Obama is a lot like Henry V yeah because they're wealthy and have a high position so it's good you see and then the student finishes with another question so who would he be if he was a modern day villain okay so I guess we're looking at this from a pretty anglo-centric point of view uh, <laughs> it is history uh, not and go, we won't even go down that road. So um, yeah, so uh, I think th this is a method to start getting students used to forms and getting them all involved. And this is the kind of thing that can be done um, in the class as well as uh, as well as um, asynchronously. So uh, that's a, that's a nice example, I think, of people coming in at an early stage. Um, the sense of community and trust, I think, is, is building up. And uh, this particular approach also avoids students copying other students' uh, answers. I mean, I know we have the Q&A forum, but that's a slightly different flavor in that there's just one question and then students answer without seeing other students' answers. So after they answered it, they don't have any particular reason to come back to the forum. Whereas here, if you use this and make them all ask a question at the end, ask another question at the end of their post, they are going to come back and look at the answer. So I guess it's a, it's a way of involving the whole class there. Um, yeah, some of these posts have been rated, which is an interesting thing that you can do or not do. 
uh, with four odds. We might talk about that later too. Uh, this next one I think is going to be a little bit hard to read. We'll have a look at it. Um, did it come up? No, come on. There we go. All right. Okay. Oh, now it's gone twice. The vagaries of uh, internet. Now, okay. Um, so at later stages, uh, Jill here has put uh, a form with with three questions. Yeah. So we might might have a look at deeper explanation. And she's also used a comment block. I've cut and pasted it into her post here, so I don't get confused by that. There would be a, a comment block at the side, and um, she talks to them, right? This, uh, as well as formally in the forum, so she pops a comment here in the comment block on the side as well. So, you know, that to me is about establishing trust and transparency in the classroom as well. That's about establishing the right classroom culture, all right? Drawing people into this space and letting them know that the teacher as well as being present in the classroom is, is also present here online. And you see here the first student to pop in, these are 13 year old boys remember, um, write a pretty sophisticated piece in, in response to that. And what's nice here, I'm not sure you can read it, but this is another student popping into the forum and saying that's a great read, um, whoever the student was. Uh, and I see that you haven't posted a question for others to answer. You should probably edit it to put a question in there. Uh, and I see that you've been committed to English, being the first person to answer the forum post. Keep it up. Now, with 13-year-old boys, I, I promise you, this kind of response generally doesn't happen in the classroom. Uh, particularly if a student pops up and does something really, really good like this, they're likely to get um, <laughs> get some other responses from other students in the classroom. But here we see, because the culture of trust and responsibility and netiquette and so on has been built up here, we've got really, really good responses from, from one of these boys to another of these boys. So I think that's something, I would say that's really difficult to achieve in a live classroom. Uh, so I think that's a real strength of, strength of the forum here. And it, as we said, right? It's not going to happen straight away. You're not going to get these forum responses straight away. You're going to have to persist a little bit um, and start with simpler questions and work towards this more complex stuff. Um, and that's nice. And then the student hops back and says, OK, I'm, I'll, yeah, you're right. I'll put my question up. Here's my question that I want the next person to answer. So that's pretty good. Once you get the students used to these forums, they, they begin to open up and use the space nicely. Uh, and here's another example here, which I think is, is nice, you know, so a thoughtful year eight boy, it's a fairly rare occurrence, as I say, in my experience in the classroom, so, yeah, good reply, possibly writing a bit more might be more beneficial for your grade, okay, <laughs> that's really, really nice, so I think, you know, uh, to come back to your, your question, Christina, once other teachers begin to see this kind of thing, then obviously they're going to going to sit up and go, hmm, you know, behave like that in my classroom. Maybe, maybe there is something in this forum thing after all. So a lot of what you do in schools is about sharing the good practice that that begins to happen in pockets once people, once creative teachers begin to get hold of the tool and and run with it. Um, okay, uh, please feel free to pop a question in the forum at any time if you have one. I've seen any recently? Could be all asleep. That's okay. That's a disadvantage of calling these things online, of course. Um, and um, also, yeah, if you if you want to hop on the microphone at any point and talk more about these examples, we can either do that at the end. Um, yeah, having some. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm a great fan of um, uh, professional. <laughs> kind of counter to what I'm trying to do at the moment as a consultant. <laughs> I'm a great fan of not bringing consultants to schools and just having teachers show what they've been doing inside the school because it's often a lot more relevant and beneficial to the other teachers in the school than having somebody come in and and uh, and uh, do a, an hour or two's presentation on what makes a great forum, sadly. Um, but yeah, <laughs> that's okay. I don't sell myself as a great speaker, but as a person that works with teachers to, to, to help them improve. Right, probably tell myself that in the future. Right, there we go. Um, and 
how high are these activity levels? And I do want to say, although TSS, as you might suspect, is a private school, it doesn't have any selective entrance policy, unlike the other private schools in the area. They take anybody. There's about 25% of the kids at any one time are, are vet kids or heading in the vocational training direction. And that includes many of the boys in these forums here. They, they may well end up um, doing vocational training of one kind or another. So it's not like you know a top-end selective entry um, grammar school or private school or whatever the equivalent is in your country. All right, and yet, and you're seeing here, look, these, these, there is a lot of activity. Okay, Jill is in here too. Yeah, okay, but the students are also posting threads of their own. Yeah, and we are getting a lot of responses for some for some of these threads. You know, uh, 65 responses right in here about the yellow wallpaper. Yeah, so obviously the boys were were interested in that on a Sunday and started to post these. Uh, Started to post these comments. Yes, forums are a very versatile tool. They are. Yeah, that's true. Um, oh, I hadn't thought about that. Okay, we do HTML coding with uh, Dreamweaver. I'm working with a with a little. I'm work, I'm doing a little bit of teaching as well at a local school at the moment. Just so I I know what goes on in the classroom. I'm not completely divorced from it. Um, yeah. So that's that's good. Yes. Uh, well, they are, right? Um, yeah, David, uh, my examples are available. Um, they're released here under Creative Commons at iMoot, and some of these examples I think you will find on the web at uh, my site here, richardnz.net. I think you'll find that I've posted some of these form examples over there. Uh, and also, uh, yeah. So I, I tend to publish all my stuff as Creative Commons so people can take it and use it and show it. So, yep, by all means, grab a screenshot and, um, yeah, and uh, use it. Yeah, consider it Creative Commons. Yeah, um, uh, attribution would be nice, of course. It's, a, <laughs> it's always nice. Yeah. Uh, okay, so there's lots of stuff going on. Um, I wanted to show you two um, over here. Uh, just I, I got some feedback from the students um, recently, uh, just a few weeks ago, in fact, uh, and I was just kind of curious to know how they. Uh, this is face to face, so uh, in the classroom. How do you con contribute to discussions in the classroom? How often? So you can see that most of these students contribute pretty often, actually, in the classroom. Some or two rarely contribute. So they do seem quite quiet, and 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 that's the thing that's been pretty well established with forums. That uh, here there is a there is a suggestion here that they will contribute more. Some of these at this bottom end here will contribute more uh, to a discussion forum than they will in the classroom, and I think that's been fairly established for some time now. That, that yeah, shy students are encouraged to uh, encouraged to have uh, are able to have their say through the forum, and they might not make it in the classroom. Okay, I'll check that out. Good. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if I've spoken elsewhere about, I've given forum examples elsewhere. I think um, the last year's Moodle Moot, April 2013, New Zealand Moodle Moot, I think if that's, that should be public somewhere. Um, so that'll have other forum examples and also examples of Mahara and other stuff. Um, yeah, and uh, I think uh, I, I did some work with um, students on Mahara, uh, which I presented at the Mahara Hui in Wellington, and that's available on the web too. So please, um, by all means, uh, get in touch with me if you can't find those examples. Uh, and it's a fairly easy email to remember, and I'll, get, I'll send you some, give you some, whatever. Yeah, so and that's fine. Sharing is good. I mean, that's what Moodle is all about, right? Open source community, uh, open learning resources. Uh, okay. Now, all right, so that's good. Uh, what else did we find out from students? This is a fairly small sample size, I will point out. Um, these are actual numbers. Um, I was going to get more data, but in the end, this is, this is all I had just before the presentation.
came, uh, came due. So um, oh, I'll get some more data on that. But I still think it's interesting as it is. Uh, why do these year nine students use form? This is not Jill's class, by the way. This is another class, uh, another English class. But uh, yeah, the teacher asked me to, which <laughs> is pretty big. But it's also interesting to see that these are significant reasons here. Yeah, uh, significant numbers of students saying, yeah, hmm, I didn't have a chance to say what I wanted to say, or I was interested in the topic. So I think that's, I think that's good. Oh, thanks, Christina. That's handy. All right. Uh, yeah. Um, yes. So uh, there are significant other reasons, for, and I think that's what other people have found out who've done more formal research into this particular topic. Uh, yeah. What else have we got? So, but do look at Jill's work as well, because uh, do do go back and look at the recording of Jill's stuff, because she's got some more form stuff there. So obviously the students are fairly positive about these discussion forums. Um, which is nice. Uh, two students, I think we've got 20 something, 22 something in the classroom now. So two don't really value them, but the rest have got, well, the rest think, yeah, there is some benefit to pull on. So I think that's probably what three quarters, a little less perhaps, but uh, it's up there somewhere. Which is not bad, not bad at all. Uh, okay, so strategies. I thought perhaps we should at least focus on uh, on some strategies. Um, I think the research so far hasn't produced a great deal of general principles. Um, I mean, if you read Mark Nichols, who's you know oh well the Mahara thing, uh, the open poly uh, in New Zealand. Um, yeah, he'll say that it's too early really to have reached. A, great number of general principles on uh, on the use of forms in schools and elsewhere um, because most of the studies like mine here are very small scale or special situations and there are many different ways of using forms that uh, somebody said here in the thing earlier yeah there's a lot of different ways to use forms so we haven't got too many general principles but I think uh, netiquette goes to culture so it goes to classroom culture so I'm saying that's the fundamental of uh, effective forums, the culture that you establish. Um, so, uh, you know, as you students may well need to be taught these things explicitly. If you've ever heard students playing online games together, or you've ever had a chance to look at a student's Facebook page, or some of the chat that they have with other students, you'll understand that these are not the kind of things that they are learning online by any means. So if you get the chance to listen to a recording of um, yeah, <laughs> an online game where students are playing together, boy oh boy, I, I guarantee you'll be shocked if you haven't heard it before. Um, so they don't, they don't learn to do these things in their own social spaces as teenagers. They behave pretty much as we would expect them to when left on their own in an online space. So we need, to, we, need to, we need to do a lot of these things in the classroom. And again, I think that's, that's really, really important. Um, and that's a, another, another place where, where Moodle and Mahara can come in because I think it's a safe space for students to make mistakes. It's a safe space for students to be trolls and learn that being a troll is not a good thing. And I would rather that they learnt that in school and got into trouble in school, then learned that when they got into university or work where it can have some real damage on their future prospects. So I think that's really, really important in schools and of course it's important everywhere that, 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 we, that we try and respect each other. Uh, so that's, that's very important. Um, grading forums, uh, Joe and I actually don't totally agree on this, but that's okay, no problem there. Um, I think yes, if you think it's important that, that students contribute, then yes, make grading forums part of your overall plan for course grading. There is a temptation with the LMS, and perhaps we've all done it at the beginning, to uh, overload students. So we're already setting them, you know, different kinds of homework, and perhaps if we're not careful, we're not, we're not replacing that homework with um, with, with use of the LMS quizzes and forums and other activities, but we're actually adding those 
blended and online activities on it, it, with the idea that we are helping students who don't necessarily do well in the classroom. So I'll just stick all this stuff up here for, you know, for the students who like to go home and practice. Um, unfortunately, that, that can overload the course for everybody and that can be really discouraging. Again, I've got some, I, I actually did a few interviews with students and I, I think that, I think I did that at the, that may not be available on the web, but that was at the, the Moodle Moot in Melbourne last year when I, I just had some, uh, had some uh, interviews with students and yeah, some of the things uh, and surveys with students and some of the data there shows that the students do not regard a course with 120 resources and activities as very balanced. Thank you very much. Yeah, <laughs> completely the reverse. So, you know, you should have a plan for course grading. It's you know, number one, right? So you should have a strategy. Okay, what are my outcomes? How am I going to measure them? Uh, so you should just double check that you haven't, you know, gone overboard on either forms or elsewhere with your grading. So obviously integrate the forum grading into your plan if you're going to do it at all. Um, and I think Jill said, uh, okay, forums if it was like replacing homework. Yeah, that should be great. Um, yeah, if forums are replacing homework that was formerly done on paper, you know, that's fine, fair enough, we'll grade it. But if we're trying, just trying to get some social interaction and thinking and engagement going on, then we won't grade it at all. Yeah, we'll, um, we'll just leave it as space for students to explore and exchange ideas. So, yeah, I, I think that's okay. So, how do people, people don't come to your forums, okay? Um, they stay empty, you know. Sadly, so you wonder what's going on. So here are some strategies that you could use. Um, and every, any course assignment can have a peer moderated component via a forum. So even if you're setting some other task, um, you can still have you can still have comments in a, in a forum about that other task, or you can have people working in a forum, even collaborative, collaboratively towards that task. So yeah. So you, you can put those in uh, coffee shops and student only forums and things like that so they can have informal interaction when doing a real assignment. Um, in terms of go-getters, in terms of uh, people who are ahead of the game, so like the student we saw earlier that made that fairly massive post at the beginning in response to Jill's first post, the keen student, the go-getter. Um, you don't have to praise them in the forum. Obviously, it's nice if their peers do that. But as a teacher, um, particularly with boys, it's not always um, it's not always good to praise boys um, in front of the class. They right? don't always appreciate it. Uh, so um, it may be better to acknowledge their contributions offline. So that's what I mean by an informal conversation space. So. You, you could do that by email, or of course, if you're in a school environment, it'd be really handy if you pass them in the corridor or whatever, just to say, oh, I'd really like to post on the forum, it would be great, rather than praising them in front of their peers. Anyway, it's just a, just a thing there. I think that's, a, that's possibly a boy thing. Uh, so encourage and recognize them in some way, not necessarily, not necessarily in front of their peers, but you can, if, if appropriate. Um, and use student moderators, and uh, this is all good, solid advice from uh, Professor Joan Thurman. So um, I think uh, I think most of it is anyway. I hope I I might have thrown in a couple of my others, by the way. Uh, if you do use student moderators, just remember um, don't abandon them. Yeah, just follow and you know, just follow up. Yeah, so. Uh, you, you still need to check how the student moderators are getting on, and again, you may need to email them and, uh, and give them some advice about how to moderate a forum, because they won't necessarily know, right? People don't necessarily know by, uh, uh, <laughs> just because they've used a forum doesn't mean they know how to facilitate or moderate one. Okay, um, I, I, how are we doing for time? Yeah, I, don't wanna, I, I do want to leave some time for discussion, because I'm sure Many of you have good ideas as well. Okay, uh, I think this is. Did this come up in the chat? Some of this will have come up in the chat. Okay, so key advantages of forms. Yeah, uh, it's good. Yeah, um, gives people processing or reflection time to think about a task. 
uh, reduces anxiety. We saw some indication of that in a small bit of data that I had. Uh, and uh, other research uh, has shown that to be true. Group size is an interesting one. Um, when I did this presentation yesterday, Tim Hunt said at the Open University that they had originally set forums up in relatively small groups, one per tutor, but they found that the forums were fairly sparse and uh, not very well supported. So they kind of mixed all the groups on one topic. Um, so they had much larger groups across tutors, uh, discussion forms, and that worked better for them. So I guess it depends on what you're trying to do or what stage you are at. And uh, yeah, I think a good strategy is um, to put students into small groups and have somebody from the group host the thoughts of the group because that tends to take people off the spot. Yeah. So if I'm posting on behalf of another people, I'm, I'm posting somebody else's ideas. So it gives me more freedom to to um, to say uh, what the group wants to say. It doesn't 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 necessarily put me in the spotlight just because I'm posting. Everybody understands that this is a group response and not my response. So if you do have a you know a, a large lecture theatre, that's probably something that you that you could try um, in real time or asynchronously if you wish. So um, yeah, good questions obviously. I, mean, I guess that's fairly obvious. Uh, yeah, and just remember, yeah, um, <laughs> sometimes we drift off, don't we? Yeah. Uh, try and keep people engaged. Uh, summarize that, all right, before we go on to questions and discussion, if you have anything. So, um, Remember that your forums develop over time and your role may well change. So you've got to be proactive in your forum, you've got to recognize that. So people might not come up first, but yeah, they will come later on. You've got to establish the right climate of culture, trust, and etiquette. Um, yeah, so how you make your forum significant is up to you, but you've got to do it some way or another. So marks um, have been shown to work in some cases. Um, Good modeling has been uh, been shown to work in others. So it just depends. You have to get a feel for your group. You have to um, have to work with the students. So, um, but again, transparency, uh, explaining. I always find you get a lot of mileage out of anything um, that you're starting when it's new with a class. If you're transparent with them, if you explain to them, look, I'm trying to do this new thing that I haven't done before. And um, it may or may not work, but I think if we all give it a go, uh, we'll learn something from it. So, you know, that kind of transparency, I think, is priceless in the classroom. Um, and yeah, it's a little bit um, of uh, reducing your authority in the classroom by saying that you're going to do something new that you're not quite sure what's going to happen. But I think, you know, if you take that risk, the students often respond well. Uh, yeah. We just uh, covered that one, creating small groups, and then uh, persistence. <laughs> we can't uh, underestimate the power of persistence, really, can we? Uh, one of the things that TSS have going for them, and some of this came out again in uh, Jill's presentation, which I urge you to to, to have a look at, um, was uh, you know you things don't happen all at once. You, you've really got to you've really got to uh, continue. Uh, TSS had um, habits of mind, highly effective people as one of their one of their threads, if you like, and that was part of um, that was part of the overall structure that we incorporated when we well, the framework is the word I'm searching for here. We set one of the things we did early on was set up a framework um, based on Bloom's, um, uh, and then. Uh, as rows, and then across the top in the columns, we had things like classroom activities, online activities, habits of mind, um, and some of the co common curriculum elements that are part of the Queensland curriculum. So we had a kind of kind of two-dimensional framework that in, that included tech and other things as well. And I think yeah, the, the habits of mind are something that our students have really taken on. And uh, you would have seen a a student, you will see students from time to time. In, in these form examples, take those habits of mind on board. Persistence is an important one. 
and um, the one I remember from Joe's presentation was metacognition. So hearing a word like metacognition come out of a 13-year-old um, student uh, is really, it's really amazing for me, but it does show that the habits of mind um, framework is, is really working over there. It's really helping students. So that's good. Um, okay, uh, learners will become familiar with what you do. So I've gone through that uh, rather quicker than yesterday. I hope I didn't miss anything significant out. But I would, if there's anybody left, oh, there's a few of you left, um, really uh, like to hear from you too, uh, if you have any ideas about forms, so are there any other points you want to make? I mean, do you violently disagree with me? I hope you do. So um, we can have a nice discussion about that. And all of the examples I've shown here have been from English teaching, so what other examples do we have? Okay, Joshua. Do you have any suggestions for encouraging a help form to choose to help each other work problems and ask content questions in subjects that aren't really suited for discussion? Okay, so let's see. Is there anybody else want to help Joshua before I jump in, jump in here? Please feel free to turn on your mic and, uh, and say something. Yeah, chemistry teacher? Okay, uh, we do have, uh, anybody jump, jumping up to take this one? No. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, again, uh, what, I've, what I've seen in, in the science um, department of TSS where, they, where they, they did have some success with forms eventually, um, the, start, the start that they made involved asking quite intri intricate questions of science. Yeah, eventually, yeah. So um, persistence pays off, right? So, um, yeah, and I... I think the questions they asked were rather daunting, so you may not want to leap straight into complex chemical equation issues or balance or um, other things. You might well want to start with fairly simple stuff about how chemistry relates to uh, students' um, individual lives, right? So, you know, uh, I don't know what age you're teaching, whether they're, you know, but if they were at my school level, if they were 13-year-old boys, I might ask them to look at chemicals in the home and find out what they are and just discuss that on the forum uh, and say, you know, do you have any fun or useful information about chemicals in the home? Yeah, so 15, 16, I think, you you know, you, you want to start with something that gives them a chance um, to be engaged, so not too dry, so something that relates it back to them. And then you can gradually build their trust, and then you know you can make sure that they're behaving properly in the forum, uh, and, then, and then you know you can use the strategies we, we, we've got here. We can, students can hopefully find out who are the knowledgeable students in the group, uh, and then you know you can, you can build up to asking them um, uh, having even student moderators respond to some of the questions. Yeah, so Lynn, yep, okay, that's a good suggestion. Um, I've used a wiki for that, but there's no reason you couldn't use, uh, you couldn't use a forum for that too. Um, I found a wiki slightly more effective because the material can be remixed and reorganized quite easily in a wiki, whereas in a forum it tends to get dispersed. You know, if they're doing revision, they probably want fairly concentrated information. But of course, there's no reason you cannot um, summarize a forum in a wiki, right? So, or have, a, have even better, have the students do it as an activity, right? So comb through the forum and reorganize that information in a wiki. So reteaching, reconsidering, comparing, and so on it gives them a chance to to, to work together on that. Um, so that's another strategy, but that's, yeah. Okay, highest ranking response, ask this question. Oh, that's nice, oh, I like that, okay. Yeah, that's really good. That's a really good way of uh, involving and perhaps motivating them too. Did it work well for you, Lynn? Do you want to talk more about it? Do you want to grab the microphone? No? Yes? Perhaps? <laughs> All right. Okay. It I might, sorry. 
Oh, sorry. I just thought I'd um, just step in here, and um, I'm just I'm just a bit conscious of the time, so I just want to say thanks again, Richard. Um, everyone, you know, as mentioned, feel free to unmute if you have some something um, that you want to contribute to the discussion. Use the chat there, but um, I do just want to say thank you before people start floating away to have a bit of a break before the next session. Um, yeah, thanks again, Richard. Oh, pleasure, Teresa. Yep. I'll bump into you one of these days around Hamilton, I'm sure. <laughs>